What is going on guys? This is Michael from GPRisers.com and today we're going to do a follow-up video on our RX 6700 XT Octominer X12 build. Now I know the first video was quite a while ago. Uh, we've had a couple different projects that we've been working on so I thought this would be a good time to make a video um, updating you guys on the 6700 XT build. And that is in part because of Team Red Miner now has a beta miner out that enables R mode. Now, R mode um, is kind of like BC mode um, that they had before uh, for the Radeon 7s and some of the other AMD cards. As you can see here, it has the Radeon 7 C mode uh, was for the Radeon 7s, making them more stable, uh, making them more efficient, and providing a higher hash rate. So although this is an update um, on our RX 6700 XT build, we are also going to be enabling R mode through Team Red Miner and also changing a couple of the settings on the RX 6700 XT to make them as efficient as possible. Now you can see here um, through the software reading, they are all getting between 100 and 110 watts per card. Um, that is not completely accurate. I will be posting a video right here on the screen that you can see. Um, this is the live power draw from the wall um, of the Octominer that houses the um, 12 6700 XTs. So as you can see in this video, it does fluctuate between uh, 1,800 watts and 1,815 watts. So instead of doing a total um, you know, per card drop right now, because we don't know what the Octominer is pulling by itself at idle, and the idle can fluctuate with Octominers, uh, you know, depending on you know, the, the fan speeds that you have and everything like that. So what we're gonna do in this video, uh, once we enable R mode and we also uh, edit the configuration to give it the most efficient um, settings that we can, the most efficient underclocking settings that we can, we are going to take the total wattage pull um, at the wall and subtract um, you know, the before and after and see what the total drop is and divide that by 12. And that should give us a accurate representation of what we are saving per card. So I'm not going to go super in depth on R mode with this. Um, Red Panda Mining made a great video. If you guys um, want to know a little bit more about it, go check that out. However, I do have it here that I do need to change the settings in uh, Miner Stat OS to enable R mode. And what R mode basically does, um, in short, is it allows you to underclock the core a little bit more while maintaining the same overclock on the memory. And by lowering the core clock and the core voltage, um, it does lower the overall wattage pull of the card. Now, if you look over here, um, you can see that these cards are a little toasty. Now, the memory is fine on these cards. As you can see here, it's anywhere from um, 70 to 80 C. Those temperatures I'm not really worried about. Um, you know, memory on NVIDIA cards get a lot harder. However, the core temperatures on these cards are fairly high. And that is because we have 12 of these in an X12 and they are fairly close to each other. So really the only way to lower the overall temperature on this would be one, to increase the Octominer fans, which we don't want to do because we are pulling out the exhaust air from them. So we don't want to have you know, them set at you know, 100%, have the CFM flow straight out. Um, it really would tear the AC out of our bunker here. So we have the Octominer fans at around 50%. Um, the fans on the cards are around 80%. So we can either increase the fan speed on the cards, which might help out a little bit, or of course, um, we can apply new underclock settings with this R mode on Team Red Miner and drop the wattage pull per card. Now, when you drop the watts per card, in turn, that will decrease the overall heat per card. And that is the overall goal in today's video. Now, at the end of the video, I will do a quick comparison on what to mine. Um, and that is originally what I was going to do with the follow-up video on this. But I thought I would kind of throw everything all together for you guys. And we can also go over the savings that we got from the R mode and the new underclocks on these cards. And we'll see what we got. So if we go over here, you can see this thing has been mining along for quite some time. Um, we have an uptime of seven days, 16 hours. And the only reason why it's only seven days is because we had to turn it off while moving things around. So here we are remoted in. Um, you can see everything here. If you want to freeze it, it gives you a little bit more of an idea of all the settings that we have on this card and what we're getting and the average and everything like that. But I'm going to switch over to the dashboard here, go to edit config. And in here, we can select the beta. So if we switch back real quick, you can actually see we are on 9.4.2. And then if we go to the settings right here under the latest version, um, they have the beta one uploaded. 
Now, by default, the minor stat team does not, um, you know, set the latest available version to any betas, but they do add it in there in case you want to try it out. And this is especially helpful in situations like this and also with the new miners um, that are seem to have, you know, brand new betas coming out every day for the LHR unlock. And so when we click the beta right here, we have uh, the file right here. This is what it would look like if you opened up Notepad on Windows. And we are going to go ahead and add this extra perimeter in right here. So I'm going to right click, copy that, and add that right here um, to the uh, end of this uh, um, text string right here. So here we copy and pasted um, this right here, but we need to change X to what mode we want to do, and we want to do the new R mode. So we're going to go back here and replace the X and put R, click Save Changes, and we are finished. So we can switch back over to the miner login here uh, for our Octominer 6700 XT rig, and we're going to go ahead and type in M stop. Click enter, and this is going to stop any miner, any mining activity that might the, the rig might be doing. And we are going to then type M start, click enter, and it should download um, the new beta for Team Red Miner, and it should enable R mode because of the perimeter that we put in the advanced miner config. All right, guys, so the miner is up and going now. If we switch back to the dashboard on miner stat, you can see here that it is mining along. Uh, we do have the same wattage pull, it looks like, but we were getting 555, 556, 554, uh, about an average of 555, and it looks like we're getting 558 mega hash. Um, I feel like that will even out back down to the 555. But maybe we did gain a couple, you know, mega hash overall on the rig from the R mode. But the real test with this is not simply just putting on R mode. It is um, R mode allows you to change the underclocks and overclocks and things like that a little bit more uh, drastically uh, than otherwise any other mode on any other miner. So that said, I am going to leave this for about another minute, um, let it even out here, and then we can go ahead and start changing our overclocks. All right, guys, we are back. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and refresh this. It's only been about a minute or so. Um, it looks like everything is working just fine, just like it was before, rock solid. You can see up here we are on the beta version. So now that this is up and running, let's go ahead and mess around with the overclocks. I do have a list of overclocks that I will be using, and I will be going one by one uh, with you guys through it, just in case you do have a 6700 XT and want to kind of mimic what I'm doing in this video. So I am going to uh, be pretty aggressive uh, with the overclocks in the beginning. Um, if you look over here um, in the uh, text file for the new Team Red Miner, it kind of gives you some clocks right here. Um, right here it says 6700 XT. It has a good effect. Um, R mode has a good effect with 1000 uh, megahertz core, uh, which is also enough for 1075 megahertz on the memory clock. So let's go ahead and start with 1000 on the core. Um, that's what it says it's good for. Um, so if we can get to that, I'll be very happy, but we can always increase it up a little bit um, just for stability's sake. Uh, but like I said, we are going to go ahead and start with 1000 on the core. Now for the core voltage, we have it at 850. I am going to drop that all the way down to 740. Memory clock, uh, we have at 1075. I'm going to switch that to 1074. It seems like people are getting better results uh, with just even that one number going down. And if you looked over here on the memory uh, behind this, it, it set it at 1074 anyways. Then memory voltage, we are going to drop that down to 1270. And memory controller, we are going to drop that all the way down to 675. Now, we are also going to be changing uh, some of the numbers down here. Now, the SOC frequency, we are going to go ahead and set this to 980. So now that we have 980 on that, um, let's go ahead and change the SOC max voltage uh, to 850. And we'll click Apply. Now that that is applied, let's switch back over to our miner, and we'll back out of the miner and close it and reapply the overclocks. And to reapply overclocks, you do M clock, click enter, and allow it to overclock. Now, overclocks on AMD generally take much longer than on NVIDIA cards. And it goes through each one and does each one one at a time. So we are going to go ahead and let this run, and we'll be right back. 
so it looks like we lost connection, which means that the overclocks were probably a little too aggressive. So let's try to reboot and remote back in. Well, while we're here, we can go ahead and change some of these settings. Um, I am going to take out this max voltage right here, um, leave the SOC clock at 980. And I am going to bump up this core clock uh, to 1050 and click apply. Now, once this comes back online, we will remote in and apply these overclocks manually again. All right, guys, it is booting back up. So let's go ahead and switch in and we'll go ahead and apply clocks again. And we'll switch over here and we'll go ahead and speed this up while it goes. All right, guys, we are back and it went ahead and applied the overclocks. We didn't get any errors like we did prior, so I'm pretty optimistic about this. Now we are going to go ahead and type in M start to get the miner going. And so we'll watch this for a little bit, then switch back over to the dashboard. Um, you know, if everything seems stable and we're getting, you know, still around 46 and a half mega hash per card, um, we can switch over to the dashboard and see what the software is saying that we're pulling on each card. And if that is all good and it looks lower, then we will go ahead and go over to our 30 amp uh, where our PDU is and see what the power draw is from the wall. So I'm going to go ahead and let this roll for a little bit, and uh, we'll speed this up again, and we'll be back in a second. All right, guys, uh, we're back here. It does look like um, all the tuning is getting completed right here. Um, I did see it for a brief second. It should pop up in a couple seconds from now again with the mega hash per card. It looks like we are getting 46.5 mega hash per card. There it is right there. Um, so we are getting 558. Uh, let's go ahead and switch back over to the dashboard here. And as you can see, it went from 100 to 110 to now 80 to 89, it looks like. Um, so this is really optimistic. Um, these fans show 25%. However, um, this dashboard sometimes takes a little bit to fully update. So I am going to leave this for about another minute or two, let this fully update. Um, I'm not sure why the fan speeds show that. Um, I guess, yeah, it does show that here in Team Red Miner as well. So that is pretty strange. I will watch the temperatures um, on those cards. Uh, if the fan was only 14%, I doubt that this card would be that cool right now. But it is a low wattage and um, everything like that. So uh, it might be. Uh, but we will keep an eye on that. So I am going to let this sit for a couple minutes. And I'll take another video um, to show you guys what this is pulling from the wall. So we'll be right back. All right, guys, we are back now. Um, it does look fairly stable. If it isn't for whatever reason, we will put a comment down in the description um, or we will just put a comment on the video saying, you know, what we changed and everything like that. But I'm fairly confident this will stick. Uh, we probably could lower the core a little bit. Um, however, I am going to leave it here for now. And I will put a video on the screen right now that does show the current wattage pull from the wall. Now here you can see we're at about 1545 to 1550, so we are going to go ahead and just call it 1550, which if we pull a calculator up right here, um, the original wattage was 1815, and if we take 1550 off of that, we do save a total of 265 watts. Now, since this new R mode and overclock and underclocks uh, changes don't uh, change at all the wattage pull or system idle from the OctaMiners, we can go ahead and just assume that this 265 watts is directly from the graphics cards. So if we divide 265 by the 12 6700 XTs that we have, that comes out to about 22 watts per card, which is a significant increase in efficiency. So that said, um, this is nearing the end of the video. I will switch over to what to mine really quick. I'm not going to drag it on for a long time. And we'll just go over some quick numbers for you guys. So right here in what to mine, I do have 555 mega hash at 1,850 watts. If we click calculate on that, um, Ethereum is pretty down today. So um, this is going to be current numbers for today. Ethereum is trading at about 1,950 per ETH. We do have 0.09 for our kilowatt um, hours. Let me go ahead and change that to just say 
uh, 0.12. That's more accurate representation. We do have a lower electricity cost here in the mining bunker, but uh, for today's video, we will go ahead and use a more um, you know, residential number. So let's bring the calculator up here. Uh, we do have uh, $13.29 in your gross revenue uh, for a 12 card 6700 XT mining rig in a X12 uh, Octaminer. And if we deduct what our net is after electricity, which is $8.06, that's about $5.23 a day in electricity costs. So if we go ahead and switch this number right here, I am going to leave 555 the same, but if we switch this to our new um, total wattage pull from the wall, which is 1,550, and we run calculate right here, it does show that our revenue is higher, even though the hash rate stays the same, and that is because of our lower electricity pull. So now that we have our calculator here, let's go ahead and calculate the electricity savings. So our revenue stays the same at $13.29 a day, but if we back out our net, which is now $8.83 a day, that gives us a total cost of $4.46 a day in electricity, which if we minus out the total electricity cost of 1,815 watts that we originally had, that electricity cost per day was $5.23 a day. That's a total savings of 77 cents a day. And if we multiply that by a year at current profitability, that is about $281 a year. So on top of saving money and increasing your bottom line on this mining rig with 6700 XTs, you also increase the longevity of the cards. Now you can see here the temperatures on the cards have dropped quite a lot. And I know that this rig hasn't been running for the seven days that it was prior. But what I can tell you is that the temperature in the mining bunker here is the same. And as you can see, these temperatures are much lower. Um, they were in the 60s before, and now they're in the 50s. We have some creeping up, and these will get warmer as time goes. However, I am confident that these will not rise nearly to anything that they were prior. So not only are you uh, saving more money with the R mode on Team Red Miner um, and being more efficient, you are also increasing the longevity of your cards. And in turn, with having lower temperatures, depending on your situation, you can also lower the fan speed, which over time does help the bearings on the fans. And overall, this is just a win-win uh, with Team Red Miner. Um, I know that this is just a beta, and I am excited to see um, you know, how this progresses and the efficiency uh, increases. And my original plan, I would say about a week ago, before this LHR unlock came out, um, was to increase the 6700 XTs in my mining farm. Uh, however, before this, uh, we were looking at around the same, um, I want to say, wattage pull or a little bit more than what a 3060 Ti LHR was pulling. And with the LHR unlock, um, unlocking those cards to anywhere from 59 to 62, it just didn't make sense to buy more 6700 XTs. However, now having this large drop in wattage pull, um, it might even out when it comes to efficiency, meaning that the hash per watt might be a lot closer than originally anticipated when the 100% LHR came out for the 3000 series. So those are numbers I will crack down. And, you know, maybe I'll make a video um, just going through the 3060 Ti LHR versus the 6700 XT and which one uh, we would prefer. But go ahead and drop a comment down below if you guys are interested in a video like that. As always, it does kind of come down to your specific situation, and we can go into detail with that. But uh, we would be interested in making a video like that if the community is interested in that. I think a lot of people were between the 6700 XTs and the 3060 Ti LHRs, and now that the LHR unlock came out, it seems like people are leaning towards it, but like I said, when it comes down to efficiency or mega hash per watt, it might be a lot closer than most people think. But that said, guys, I am not going to ramble too much here. Um, I hope everyone watching this has a great rest of their day, and we'll see you guys next time.